Hey booktube, it's Thea and this is going to be my April and May book haul. Uh, so for April I have three books here that I got. Um, one of them is brand new full price and the other two I actually got for free. I'm very excited to read all of these. I will really quickly show you guys uh, what I got. Um, uh, my first one is the April book for book of the month and that was The Guest List by Lucy Foley. I am very excited to read this. I was going to try to read it in April, but I didn't get around to it, um, but I'm very excited to give it a try. I've heard um, really good things about it. It sounds like it's going to be kind of like um, Clue or um, Night Out or And Then There Were None, um, but I am very excited to read this. I'm trying to branch out and read more mystery thriller novels, so I'm excited to give this a read. Um, if you don't know what it's about yet, it says here, it's the wedding of the year, but someone won't survive it. On a remote island off the coast of Ireland, guests gather to celebrate the wedding of Jules Keegan and Will Slater. Will is a rising television star. Jules is a smart, ambitious magazine publisher. Though the sea is a little choppy and the self-service spotty, the wedding is everything you'd expect of a young power couple. Designer dress, four-tiered cake, boutique whiskey, vintage champagne. Every detail has been curated to perfection. All that's left to orchestrate is the happiness. But perfection is for plans and people are all too human. It's not long after the cake is cut and the champagne popped that resentment and petty jealousies come out. Worst yet, the latest barometer reading shows the weather has shifted from fair to changeable and dark clouds are looming overhead. Everyone on the island has a secret, everyone has a motive, and someone won't leave the wedding alive. But even, um, but I'm very excited to read it. The back even says the guest list, an exclusive wedding on a remote Irish island. The bride, the plus one, the best man, the wedding planner, the bridesmaid. All of a secret, all have a motive, but only one is a murderer. Um, that was pretty much all I needed to go ahead and pick this up, um, but I'm very excited to give it a read and I'm hoping for, I'm hoping to pick this up very, very soon. Uh, and then on two different occasions, I was visiting my neighborhood's little free library and I happened, I stumbled across this one. It's called The Diary of a Bookseller by Sean Beichel. Um, this, I didn't know at the time, it was actually nonfiction. Uh, it's semi-auto uh, biographical about the author Sean who is actually the owner of the bookshop which is Scotland's largest secondhand bookshop and it sounds very cute uh, it says here the bookshop is Scotland's largest secondhand bookshop it's a dream was a book lovers paradise a Georgian townhome full of twisting corridors and roaring fires set in a beautiful town by the edge of the sea a rummage on its Crooked shelves can produce anything from a 16th century leather-bound Bible to a first edition Agatha Christie. But behind the scenes of this slice of literary heaven, things are very different. Meet Sean, owner of the bookshop, bibliophile, and misanthropic extraordinaire. Seen through his honest and hilarious diaries, we get a very different view of book selling. One beset with malfunctioning heating, eccentric customers, bad-mannered, vain forging employees and an empty till. As Sean takes us with him on buying trips to old estates and auction houses, recommends books, both, both lost classics and new discoveries, introduces us to the thrill of the unexpected find and evokes the charms and horrors of a small town life, we gain an inside look at the trials, tribulations, and joy of life in the book trade. This sounds adorable and so excited to give it a read. I've never heard of it. I haven't seen anything about it on BookTube. So I'm very excited to um, read this and hopefully enjoy it and love it and recommend it to everybody here. Um, but I'm very excited and the cover is just absolutely adorable and I love like little secondhand bookshops and the stories about them and stories behind them so I just feel like I'm absolutely gonna love this. And then uh, on a different <laughs> trip to the Little Free Library I found a book called Wild Alone by Cassie Zorkova. Um, I know absolutely nothing about this book. Um, I read a little flap here and it seemed kind of interesting, so I decided to pick it up. It says, in this darkly imaginative debut novel full of myth, magic, romance, and mystery, a Princeton freshman is drawn into the love triangle with two brothers 
and discovers terrifying secrets about her family and herself. This is what sold me right here. A bewitching blend of Twilight, The Secret History, Jane Eyre, and A Discovery of Witches. That is pretty much, um, mom was like, all right, okay, I will give it a try. Uh, for every world, there is an underworld. Also, the main character shares my name, so I knew I had to pick it up. Arriving at Princeton for her freshman year, Thea Slavin finds herself alone, a stranger in a strange land. Away from her family and her Eastern European homeland for the first time, she struggles to adapt to unfamiliar American ways and the challenges of college life, including a young man whose brooding good looks and murky past intrigue her. Drawn to the elusive Rise and his equally handsome and mysterious brother, Jake, she ventures into the sensual mythic underworld as irresistible as it is dangerous. In this shadow world that seems to evoke Greek mythology and the Bulgarian legends of the Semodogi, or Wild Alones, four switches who beguile and entrap men, Thea will discover a family secret bound to transform her forever if she can accept that dead doesn't always mean gone and love doesn't always distinguish between the two. It seemed kind of intriguing, so I'm excited to give it a read. Um, the main author is actually also Bulgarian, um, and she graduated from Harvard Law School and has practiced finance law, and so I'm really excited to give it a read. It's something, again, I've never heard of. I haven't really seen anybody talk about. Um, it has mixed reviews on Goodreads, um, but I'm excited to give it a try, and maybe it's something I will really, really enjoy. And then for June, I have three books and a graphic novel to show you guys. Uh, the first one is a graphic novel, and that's called Wayward, Volume 1, String Theory. Um, I've seen the Surface Booktube a few times over the last, I feel like a couple years ago, it was kind of surfacing. Um, it was very intriguing, and we were talking to our comic book guy, um, and he said that he's heard good things about it, so we decided to give it a try. Uh, this follows Rory, who is our main character. She's half Irish, half Japanese. Um, she uh, is coming to Japan to live with her mom after things happen with her dad and um, she gets there and all of a sudden things aren't what they seem to be, like always. Um, it says here, Rory Lane is trying to start a new life when she reunites with her mother in Japan, but ancient creatures lurking in the shadows of Tokyo sense something hidden deep within her, threatening everything she holds dear. Can she unlock the secrets of her power before it's too late? Um, I've already read this. I enjoyed it. Um, as a first, as a first volume, I gave it like three stars. Um, but I'll talk more about that in my wrap up. But I, um, it was very intriguing. I love the art style. I think that the art style is just absolutely adorable. I really love Rory. I think that she is a great uh, character, and she is um, very well um, fleshed out. And I really enjoy her and she quickly uh, kind of gets a band of people together to kind of help her discover what's going on. All of a sudden she realizes she has some magic powers and she doesn't really know what they mean or what to do with them. Um, but I am excited to continue on this, this series and um, hopefully uh, I enjoy it. And I, hopefully I enjoy the volumes more than I enjoyed this one, um, but I did and still enjoy this. It's very intriguing as to um, what's going to happen. And I really liked um, the portrayal of Japan. I think that it's going to, I find that it really incorporates a lot of Japanese mythology and their culture. And so I'm very excited to continue on with the series. And then um, for May, I went a little overboard with Book of the Month because I was very excited with some choices and um, I decided to pick up three books from Book of the Month. My choice for May is The Knockout Queen by Rufy Thorpe. Um, this is actually on my June TBR. I'm very excited to give it a read. Um, it follows two main characters, Bunny and Michael. Um, they're very different. They're basically opposite. Bunny is this like really tall, beautiful, rich LA queen princess. Um, and Michael is just struggling to survive high school. Um, you learn that he's keeping in some secrets. He hasn't come out to his family yet, um, but it follows them uh, becoming friends and not too 
and then not sure what else is going to happen but i'm excited to give it a read it's also very short it's like 270 pages so i'm very curious to see what happens in 270 pages and um, i've heard early i've heard good early buzz about this so i'm excited to get to this this month uh, then uh, I did two add-ons for Book of the Month. Both of them are backlog titles. The first one being Anna K uh, by Jenny Lee. This is a modern YA adaptation retelling of Anna, of Anna Karenina, um, and I've heard really good things about it. Um, Anna is a Korean American, and she's living in Manhattan. She's 17. She's at the top of Manhattan and Greenwich Society, even as she prefers the company of her horses and dogs. She is the perfect boy boyfriend and she has always made her Korean American father proud. As her friends struggle with the pitfalls of teenage life, Anna always seems to sail gracefully above it. That is until the night she meets Alexa Count Roski, a notorious playboy. Alexa is everything Anna is not, but he has never been in love until he meets Anna and maybe she hasn't either. As Alexa and Anna are pulled irresistibly together, she has to decide how much of her life she is willing to let go to be with him. And when a shocking revelation threatens to shatter their relationship, she is forced to ask if she has ever known herself at all. Dazzling, dazzling opulent, and emotionally riveting, Anna Kay, or Anna Kay, is a brilliant reimagining of Leo Tolstoy's timeless love story, Anna Karenina, but above all, it is a novel about the dizzying, glorious, heart-stopping experience of first love and first heartbreak. I am excited to give this a read. I've heard good things, um, and it seems like it's going to be the perfect summer read, so I'm excited to get to this very soon as well. And the last book uh, that I, I use as an add-on for Book of the Month is quite different for me. I don't normally pick this up, wouldn't be something I normally pick up, but I've heard nothing but amazing things about it, so I decided to step outside of my comfort zone and give it a try, and that's Beach Read by Emily Henry. Um, this is a like chick lit women's fiction um romance novel uh about two people um who are both writers and they basically switch genres and um decide to write each other's novels uh augusta is an acclaimed author of literary fiction and january writes best-selling romance when she pens a happily ever after he kills off their entire cast they're polar opposites in fact the only thing they have in common is that for the next three months they're living in neighboring beach houses broke and begged down and broke and bogged down with writer's block then one hazy evening one thing leads to another and they strike a deal designed to force them out of their creative ruts Augustus will spend the summer writing something happy and January will pen the next American, the next great American novel. She'll take him on field trips worthy of any rom-com montage and he'll take her to interview surviving members of a backwoods death cult, obviously. Everyone will finish a book and no one will fall in love, really. Um, but I, this isn't normally, normally something I read. I don't normally pick up a lot of like romance genre books. I pick up a lot that has like fantasy with romance or contemporary with romance, historical fiction with romance, but just straight up a romance novels not tend to be something I pick up, but I've heard amazing reviews about this. It uh, sounds like it's the perfect summer read and it is already like triple digits here, so I need something summery. Um, I'm excited to be able to read. I'm a little weary going in because it's something outside of my comfort zone, but I have heard that everyone is loving this. Um, even people who don't tend to read romance love this. So I'm very excited to get to this hopefully this summer as well. So here is everything I've hauled in the last two months. Um, what are you guys reading? What have you hauled recently? If you've read any of these, any thoughts, comments, and opinions about them? Um, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe to get notified of when I post new videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy reading. I hope you're well. Stay safe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.